The 2023 World Baseball Classic was single-handedly the most epic competition in baseball history. 3-2. He struck him out! And Japan's back on top of the baseball world! After waiting a long six years since the last WBC, the anticipation was off the charts. The first round alone drew over a million spectators, which is nearly double the numbers from the previous tournament. In Japan alone, almost 100 million people tuned into the game. Even Shohei Otani's Instagram followers skyrocketed over a million after just one round. The rating of the competition saw a 44.4% rating on TBC. In Puerto Rico, viewership jumped by an incredible 77% in the first round. And to top it off, the event featured the most watched game in baseball history. Even the president of Mexico got so caught up in the excitement that he personally fast-tracked a player's citizenship just so he could compete. Everyone was buzzing. Fans, players, even casual observers who just wanted to be part of the hype. Well, everyone except for the USA. While players loved it, MLB teams hated it. Some folks in the US dismissed the whole thing as a glorified exhibition game. There were even calls for the WBC to be canceled altogether. The USA team went on to lose to Japan in the finale, and if they don't change their attitude by the time the next WBC rolls around in 2026, history might just repeat itself. But to really understand what we're talking about, let's take a quick trip back in time to see why Team USA had the biggest problem in the 2023 WBC, despite making it to the finals. Since the World Baseball Classic kicked off in 2006, there's been a nagging complaint. Team USA just doesn't seem to care as much as the other countries. And honestly, it doesn't help matters that some Americans don't even make efforts to hide their disgust for the WBC. Part of the issue is that a bunch of top American players have often given the WBC a hard pass. They usually prefer sticking with spring training, hanging out with MLB teams, and avoiding any risk of injury. But in 2017, Team USA pulled off a surprise that left the baseball world stunned. They shook off their usual whatever vibe, actually put in the effort, and ended up winning the WBC for the first time. With the 2021 WBC postponed due to the pandemic, the stage was set for a big comeback in 2023. And after their epic win in 2017, Everyone thought Team USA would be pumped and ready to go all out again. But that wasn't the case. On one hand, some fans were psyched that they didn't have to wait until the offseason, all the way in October, to get a taste of some epic baseball action. Some folks were also thrilled by the idea of watching top MLB fireballs face off on a global level. But at the same time, Others went on full social media rants expressing how much they hated the WBC. And by others, we mean American MLB fans. But fans weren't the only ones on the WBC hate train. In fact, the reaction of the fans was just a projection of how MLB teams really felt about the WBC. And when you think about it, you can probably understand their reason. You see, the WBC happens during MLB spring training which is a very critical time for teams to get ready for the regular season. During this period, players focus on fine-tuning their skills, getting in shape, and building team chemistry. So, when the 2023 WBC rolled around, MLB teams and players had to set their priorities straight and pick between joining the international fund or sticking with spring training and focus on their big league club. But beyond that, Major League teams were freaking out about potential injuries as throwing at maximum effort during the WBC could put serious strain on pitchers' arms and shoulders, and no one wants to lose a star player before the season even starts. It got so wild that only one out of the top 20 American-born pitchers decided to suit up for the WBC. Those who did pitch eventually had strict instructions from their MLB teams to not overdo it on the innings to avoid injuries but to also throw enough to be ready for the season, since they'd be missing spring training anyway. This situation forced Team USA into a bind. Instead of deploying their pitchers in a way that maximized their chances to win, 
they had to carefully manage limited innings, sometimes even burning their best arms in a game that were already well in hand. At some point, even Team USA's managers were going nuts due to all the restrictions placed on players by their major league teams. Pitchers were getting jittery about ramping up too quickly, and other teams were getting upset about what seemed like preferential scheduling for Team USA, because for some reason, they were the only team in their pool that didn't have to play a day game after a night game. Even with a bit of favoritism seemingly tilting things in Team USA's favor, they still had some serious gaps, starting with their pitching staff. Most of their star pitchers opted out of playing, so even though the lineup was stacked with heavy hitters like Mike Trout, Mookie Betts, and Nolan Arenado, but the pitching was a whole different story. Yankees lefty Nestor Cortez and Dodgers ace Clayton Kershaw had to sit out due to injuries and insurance issues, while other star pitchers just skipped the whole thing altogether. By the end of the day, the pitchers they did have were, well, less than stellar. There was no Max Scherzer, Shane McClanahan, or even Spencer Strides in sight. In short, they were missing that surefire ace in the lineup, which left them more than a little vulnerable. But beyond their Team USA's lineup lapses, the competition was insane. You see, MLB is pretty awesome, and a big part of that awesomeness comes from its global flavor. Sure, baseball might be America's pastime, but the top talent is increasingly coming from all over the world. Right now, 29% of MLB players are either Latin or Asian, which is a big jump from 20% back in 1996. And it's not just about the numbers, these international players bring some serious skills to the table. To put things into perspective, four of the top 10 potential players from the 2022 season were set to play for non-American WBC teams. You've got Manny Machado from the Dominican Republic, Freddie Freeman from Canada, Francisco Lindor repping Puerto Rico, and Jose Altuve from Venezuela. Jordan Alvarez from Cuba would have made it five if he had played. As for the pitchers, Two of the top 10, Shohei Otani from Japan and Sandy Alcantara from the Dominican Republic, are international stars as well. So if you're keeping track, that's eight out of the top 20 players coming from outside the US. This means Team USA had to face some of the best baseball talent on the planet and make the most of the pitchers they had. And honestly, they gave it their all, but it wasn't entirely a smooth sailing. Up until the finals, their final stint went a little like this. They won, then lost, then won, and won, and won, and won. In the group stage, they were placed in Pool C, going up against Great Britain, Mexico, Canada, and Colombia. They kicked things off strong with a 6-2 win against Great Britain, but then got a wake-up call with a rough 5-11 loss to Mexico. Thankfully, they bounced back with a dominant 12-1 victory over Canada and clinched the spot in the quarterfinals with a tight 3-2 win against Colombia. In the quarterfinals, they faced Venezuela in a nail-biter, clinching a dramatic 9-7 win thanks to a clutch grand slam by Trey Turner. This thrilling victory sent them to the semifinals, where they breezed past Cuba with a 14-2 win, securing their spot in the championship game. Now, we all know what happened next. The championship game brought together Mike Trout and Shohei Otani in a showdown that had everyone on the edge of their seats. Otani started with a slider for a ball, then unleashed four fastballs, all clocking at least 99.8 miles per hour. Unfortunately for Team USA, Trout took a mighty swing at one of these heaters and missed, then swung through a slider on the outside corner, sealing the game. In the end, Team USA fell just short, losing 3-2 to Japan. And if we were being honest, history might repeat itself if the team doesn't get all its top American players on board for WBC 2026. What do you think though? Does Team USA have a shot at winning the 2026 World Baseball Classics? Let us know in the comments.